sir and first of all uh, we would like to know that uh, as far as your uh, uh, net NPA, gross NPA and overall the asset qualities are uh, showing much more strength. Uh, which are the factors leading to the, this strength and what kind of scenario we can expect from the uh, other uh, next quarters? Good morning and thank you for having me on CNBC Basar. Uh, the uh, you know, NPA and GNPA figures are very strong because uh, what has happened is we made uh, provisions last year and in the previous year uh, for, for bad loans. So that has given us a, a strong base to cover any, and we are also having tremendous recoveries uh, and collections from the field. So all of that is helping us to maintain and reduce the uh, PAR numbers and the GNPA numbers. So these are co steadily coming down. The last three, four quarters, if you look, it has been steadily coming down and we expect it to continue to come down in the uh, two, three quarters ahead. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, one more question on regarding that asset quality. As far as we've seen, uh, this microfinancing segment and uh, the small financing segment is uh, now in a uh, growing side. So, uh, which are the verticals? Which are the segments uh, you are seeing uh, much more growth in uh, terms of uh, asset quality in terms of repayment schedules? Yeah, we we have about uh, seventy percent of our business is in microfinance and about 15% is in housing, and 9% is in micro and small enterprises, MSC. So these are our three main verticals. Uh, we are seeing good collections in all of them. It's much better than it was in the past, uh, in the last year. Uh, the strongest collections is in microfinance, because that is a segment of the business which seems to be coming back faster than other areas. So we are quite happy with that situation. And uh, we are helping our customers to, you know, also uh, recover from that situation of COVID. Right, sir. Uh, and sir, uh, what kind of uh, scenario we can expect from uh, NIMS? Uh, uh, as we seen, quarter on quarter is almost flat. Uh, do we uh, see any expansion in NIMS in coming quarters? So the NIMS, uh, you know, it has been around 10% this quarter. It, uh, the June quarter, it came down by a little bit. The NIMS will be under little pressure going forward because you know we're expecting RBI and interest rates to go up. Uh, so if interest rates do go up, our deposit rates, which already has seen an increase, we may have to push it up again. And how fast we are able to pass on the uh, interest rate hike to our customers on the lending side is something that remains to be seen. So in the short run, there will be some pressures, but I must say, in, emphasize to your viewers and listeners, that we have got good recoveries. So offsetting these side squeeze in NIMS, we will be getting good traction on collections from uh, our uh, overdues and things like that, including overdue interest. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, seen, uh, we saw, uh, seen that asset quality is growing on uh, much more uh, better sizing. So uh, what kind of expectation uh, we expect for the uh, FY23? Uh, how much recovery uh, can we expect and uh, which kind of uh, CASA growth and NIMS expansion uh, we can expect for the FI23? Gross advances will grow by about 30%. The deposits we are expecting, we would like to see it grow much more than the 30%, maybe about 35%, so that the uh, you know CD ratio is more uh, acceptable levels. As far as the collections are concerned, uh, you know, and NIMS, uh, that is something that uh, we will not be able to give you uh, guidance at this stage because it is a bit volatile, but the traction will continue on the collections and we expect it to be a good year. That is what I can assure your viewers.